session is calendaring, calendaring standards for free software. Our speaker has been working, has been programming for the last 30 years with a particular interest in free software for the last 15. In 97, he started a company called, with friends called Catalyst IT, which, which worked with free software. He quit that in 1908 and started working on DAV iCal. Can, yeah. can we please welcome our speaker, Andrew McMillan. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, that was a Y2K bug there. I quit in 2008, of course. Um, but <laughs> these, things, these things happen. Some software just can't cope, particularly some, some uh, wetware. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about calendaring standards for free software. And the first, the first question when you talk about that is what, why do we want standards? So you know, if we don't have standards, we can't interoperate well. We can have de facto standards, but particularly, I think, with calendaring, we want to not just coordinate our own uh, work, but to coordinate our work and other people's work. So the part of the point of having a calendar <coughs> is to know when a shared event is going to happen. So we need standards. So during this presentation I'm going to talk about, firstly I'm going to talk about standards, various standards used in calendaring and I'm going to give some, uh, then I'm going to give some sort of light review of of uh, the various open source software that's available for calendaring as well. Now, uh, if you've got any questions, I'd normally love to have them during the presentation, but in this case we want to run around with microphones and so on, so if we, if we can save them for the end. Um, and I'm also you know, committing another um, sin of presentation here, uh, being an organiser of the conference and uh, as well as uh, speaking at the conference makes it a little bit disjoint and I haven't practised this as much as I should have, so, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll get excited as I once heard someone say before a very, very fine presentation, so we can hope. Um, so yes, along the way, current standards software will mostly be covered at the end. First of all, the standards. And the, the, the main standard that is used in calendaring uh, currently is defined in RFC 5545, or which replaces RFC 2445. And this is the standard that defines the iCalendar format that contains a, a V calendar block and then V time zone and V event and V to do and V journal. It, you know, people look at it and, and it was invented quite a long time ago, which is often the case with standards. Email looks pretty clunky these days. Um, and uh, iCalendar looks fairly clunky these days and people People want to make it, you know, have all little tags and things inside it. But when you, when you actually dig down into that standard, it's not as bad as you might think. It's, it's containers within containers, and it actually maps pretty well to uh, a structured, you know, a modern sort of structured standard. And it's supported very widely. Uh, it works well for interchange. Everything does it. And so it's going to be around for quite a while yet, although there are moves to replace it with something else. Alongside RFC 5545, we get RFC 5546, which is the um, iCalendar Transport Interoperability Protocol. It's a, a, um, it's a standard for moving iCalendar data around sending messages that are iCalendar data. And this is what this is what your email client sees when you get invited to a meeting if, if you're using a, a, a mail as a transport for, for um, calendar data. Uh, again, it, it's maybe even a little more clunky because it's, it's trying to do things remotely, uh, sort of like a, a protocol that copies a payload across and then runs in batch. Did you want to say something, Ben? <laughs> 
So Outlook... Yeah, so Ben's asking whether this is related to what Outlook and Exchange use for uh, messaging events. And Outlook will send emails containing um, ITIP messages. So if, if somebody using Outlook invites you to a meeting and you get it via email, where that transformation happens internally, I, I don't know, it might happen in the Exchange server, it might not happen if they're using an Exchange, you know, if it's an Exchange to Exchange communication, but certainly if it goes outside the organisation that's what you'd expect to see. Um, there are definitely interoperability issues with uh, Microsoft products, in, in particular the open source software uses Olson time zone name, time zone name convention and Microsoft use different time zones, so maybe we can talk about that a bit later. But. So uh, this is supported widely via email. Um, I don't think there are really any other transport mechanisms that are heavily used for ITIP. Another, another format uh, that's sort of more recent design is Colab format. This is used in a number of open source uh, products, some of which interoperate with um, Exchange in particular. Um, it's an XML based format which is all fine and good, but it was sort of invented without the, the uh, benefit of a lot of the experience that went into the um, iCalendar format over many years, so it, it misses out on, you know, made, they made some mistakes in this. In particular, uh, scheduling repeating events that happen in a particular time zone um, does not work. It's a particular problem with repeating events. If you have a, a, an event that is scheduled weekly at 10 a.m. in um, Berlin and that crosses a daylight saving boundary, you can't simply say, oh, we'll just store all the times as UTC. Um, it's, you have to actually retain that time zone information. So, and this standard uh, doesn't do it. And I don't think it's incredibly heavily used. Um, another uh, RFC that you'll find is 3283, which is a guide to internet calendaring. I really don't think this is a great use of RFCs, but it sort of gets outdated too quickly, so I wouldn't really bother reading that one. Um, and, uh, other things that, that people work on are f free busy time, so knowing when people have a, an appointment, how you can work that out. There, there is a standard for free busy within the uh, iCalendar standard and that is used for querying free busy uh, regularly but the, the ways of inquiring free busy for people who are not using the same server as you, the standards are sort of limited availability, but there are, there are some moves to improve it as we'll see shortly. So, <clears throat> so one, of the, one of the standards for sharing calendars that sort of appeared in the 90s and uh, you know, early this millennium is using WebDAV to store calendars. And whoever did this first uh, probably did it the wrong way because they just said, there's a WebDAV server, I'll put my iCalendar um, file on there, and it's a, a vCalendar file with lots and lots of events. And if you've used a calendar for a couple of years, one of these files gets to be two megs, three megs, five megs, and so, you know, it starts significantly impacting the network, and you, you run into major um, contention issues with who can modify the calendar. You haven't got control over who can modify individual events, and so it, it you get a lot of contention problems and, and it, Microsoft must love it. After that, uh, somebody came up with an improvement on that, which is WCAP. This is a lot better. Um, this is nearly good enough, I think. And uh, what this does is instead of storing all of the events in one iCalendar file, it stores a whole lot of little files, each one with an event with all of the 
necessary metadata associated with it, like time zone and, and so on. And this is basically, it, it requires the client to do a bit more work, but it, so, I mean, you can't use this in the same way that you can use web dev calendars, which effectively is just adding a, a oh, goody, we can fetch the file from another server layer onto having it on a local file system. Um, but it, it really does have a lot of advantages in terms of bandwidth use and so on. Um, yeah, and uh, CalDAV is, is a much newer protocol uh, released in, in 2006 or 2007, I think. And this is like WCAP. Uh, it has some additional report functionality so clients can request events across a certain range. So it's got some extensions to DAV that apply specifically to calendaring. Um, and this is, I guess this is what is reasonably widely used. There are, uh, there are quite a number of, of servers that support CalDAV. Uh, Exchange is noticeably absent from that of course, but uh, you know, mo many of the other, other servers uh, do support it, and it's starting to starting to to get better over time. So CalDAV appears to be the the standard that people will be using going forward, and we're adding extensions to it to improve it, to to add sort of new functionality to it. But CalDAV is the is the basis that those things are being built on, and in particular the extensions that we're adding are. are extensions for coordinating uh, meetings among work group calendars. So adding the ability to um, straightforwardly query free busy for other members of the work group uh, to, to be able to delegate access to other calendars within the work group um, and to use the ITIP uh, format to send messages from calendar to calendar without using a, a, an email transport underneath so that the, the CalDAV server uh, actually does the communication, communication with itself effectively. So you, you end up with calendar inbox, calendar outbox, and some of the calendar clients are starting to, imp uh, to, starting to support this. The, uh, the, this is a RFC draft I hope it's going to be out this year. Um, it's been, you know, quite a long time in the making, and uh, I, yeah, I think it's getting very close now. Certainly, the the uh, Apple uh, clients support it. Um, um, Mozilla Lightning um, supports it, and there's there have been a little bit of rumbling about maybe adding some support to Evolution for this. So it'll be it'll be good to see those things. Moving on from that, the next standard under development is, is iSchedule. So this is taking those scheduling extensions and then allowing communication from uh, one calendar server to another. So this provides a, a, a protocol which is quite similar in a lot of ways to email. And um, given that it's 2011 now, um, we hope we don't want to get spam calendar uh, <laughs> invitations to <laughs> meet me and get two million US dollars or something like the text message I got yesterday. And um, so this, this includes quite a lot of reference to, to newer uh, email standards as well. So a lot of the, the I schedule work, which is still early days really, I think it'll be a year or two before the standard is finalised. Uh, it's using um, DKIM for sort of strong authentication and it's, it mandates TLS for transport and uh, those sorts of things and, and ways of approved senders, receivers for, for calendars. Um, mm. uh, so it it does get a lot more complicated though. So along with calendaring, the standards um, that 
you need when you start scheduling the events for other people are address books. Uh, um, I guess that's why they've sort of gone in the same way. But vCard is the is the standard for for um, address book information, much like uh, much like vCalendar is for for um, event information. And so card dev is a standard for uh, address books that is very similar to, to uh, CalDAV in a lot of ways. Similar in, in the way that um, CardDAV is, is much closer to, to, uh, to well, the storage of, of V cards on a on a WebDAV address book is much much more similar to WCAP, and then CardDAV adds reports to that. And um, that is a nearly finalised standard which is waiting for a finalisation of vCard version 4 before it will be released. So uh, another um, issue with, uh, with these um, calendar standards is people seem to want to transform them to XML. So, there is an XML X calendar standard which is very close to uh, to development to finalisation, and it, it is essentially an XSLT kind of transform of the um, of the I calendar format, and that's the intention is that it should be completely compatible with I calendar. With CalDev now actively in use in quite a few places, is starting to see uh, performance issues that you know that get highlighted once you once your your beautiful design meets the real world. So, a, a new uh, proposed standard recently is uh, WebDev synchronization, which you know CalDev is still a pull protocol effectively you you have to query the server to see if there are changes to a calendar and so in order to minimize the uh, the the amount of traffic that happens in that situation there's web dev synchronization which simply maintains a version number effectively for the for, for each calendar and you and you can request you know is there a new version of this calendar and, and if there is then you'll get a bunch of data about it um, so that that's a lot of, lot of uh, CalDev servers are um, keen to use this, and I expect that'll be finalised in the next two or three months, um, because it's not a particularly complicated standard, that one. But it's still pull synchronisation, and it would be nice to get push synchronisation. So um, no, <coughs> no particularly strong uh, standards for push synchronisation yet. There's kind of some been some work by Apple to do push synchronization so the Apple client does implement an internal sort of pre RFC document and I and I think we'll we'll see something come out of this. Using XMPP seems likely to be the way things will go. Uh, it may just be that clients more clients will start to implement the Apple version, which is not an uncommon approach. Uh, and my own CalDev server does the same, uh, you know, supports the push that way. So, in order to make it easy for people to use things like CalDev, we want to, to encourage setup of a client to be easy so that you can just, you know, open your device and, and Type in maybe your email address and your, and your username and password, and, and you'll be able to connect. Your your calendar program will be able to figure it all out. So some of the newer things that are being used in, in CalDev uh, and CardDev in order to, to achieve that goal, there's been some SRV records defined for uh, CalDev and CardDev, and there's also use of a relatively new uh, RFC which specifies the use of slash dot well known slash something or other for what's called well known URLs so that that can be a standard place on servers that you can hit and you'll get redirected to 
wherever the real thing is. Um, and <clears throat> that's only very recently been, uh, been finalised, but pe pretty much everybody is, is starting to use that now. Uh, the SRV records, of course, you know, define a, a server and a port once you've got a domain name, uh, and then once you've got the server and the port, you, you kind of need to find the home URL, so this is how you do that. There was a lot of debate about whether you should need to, that SRV records were supposed to let you find the server and you don't need a URL then, you just look at the server. But a lot of people don't want to run their calendar in the root of the server. Or, I don't know, seems silly to me, but then. Anyway, there's lots of free software clients, for, um, particularly for Caldev, uh, Lightning, there's the Mozilla uh, plugin for, um, for Thunderbird. And there was a standalone calendar client for Mozilla, but they've reasonably recently stopped working on that. Uh, it was called Sunbird, but it's kind of kind of died now. So there is no standalone calendar. That's that's Lightning is it, and you get your email at the same time. Um, Evolution, of course, is the uh, GNOME uh, one. Likewise, that's you know everything at once, um, and uh, both of these support events and to dos. Um, Evolution also supports vJournal for, for notes being stored on the Caldev server. There's various options in KDE, um, latest versions of KDE, I believe Akonadi has a plugin for the, uh, that does Caldev. There's also, there's also a KCaldev and a KCarddev kind of resource something or other, but I've never managed to build those, so I can't say too much about them. Mulberry is a, is a project uh, by uh, Soros Dabu and he's one of the main authors of a lot of these um, calendaring specifications. Uh, he works at Apple on their calendar server project. Um, that's pretty clunky on Linux but uh, looks a lot prettier on uh, OS X. So. Uh, Horde has some support for Caldev now I believe. Uh, Roundcube has Patch is available. I don't think it's in the in the trunk of it. There's uh, there's a thing called ACAL, which is not quite released yet. Um, that's been my project for the last three months is writing an Android Caldev client. And uh, there's a pro project called Chandler, which is a which is a, a interesting project from the Open Source Applications Foundation, and uh, they have a companion server to that. So Chandler works with Caldev, but it's sort of designed to work with uh, their companion server. So that's pretty good. And then we have other client software. So um, people are often interested in what proprietary software is available that supports this. So EM Client is a Windows uh, software for, that does, does Caldev, CardDev, and uh, that's pretty full function. Um, Apple iCal does all of the CalDev, CardDev stuff. Well, Apple address book does the CardDev bit. And um, Microsoft Outlook has a, a free software plugin which has about 40 pages of configuration for it, making it rather difficult for people to use in an enterprise environment, as I understand it. But I haven't got a copy of Microsoft Outlook, so I can't say how easy it is to use. The server status um, is uh, it's kind of similar, I guess. Free, free software, Apple Calendar Server is probably the, the, the biggest, uh, most fully featured CalDev, CardDev server. Um, it's obviously an, an Apple project, but very much open source. It's uh, BSD licensed, I think. and. There's, um, yeah, work, works well, it's written in Python, it uses uh, extended attributes in the file system to store metadata. Um, I believe they're switching that to, to uh, using Postgres for a database uh, because of performance issues with it. There's uh, Davacal, which is my main project I've been working on since 2005, that's uh, Postgres backend database and uh, PHP 
um, application, not really a web application, more of an HTTP application. Uh, SOGO is a uh, project out of a company in Canada and Zimbra is a, I think they're owned by Yahoo or something, but it's a free software. VMware, right, yep. Zimbra? There's a commercial version and there's a open source version. So Zimbra have what they call an open source version, but all the useful bits, also known as the bits which are hideously painful and broken, are not open source. Um, they have their patched, Postfix, their patched, MySQL, they patched everything. But there's no real reason for those. It's all in the jar. The bits that are Zimbra are all in the giant Java blob that they don't give you source for. Right. Uh, okay, there's uh, Radicale, which is a Python based project. I believe it uses a MySQL backend. Or does now. Does now. <laughs> Um, that's still very early days for that one, I think. It's un m under development. Uh, Cosmo, which is the uh, companion to Chandler. Uh, Cosmo is a Java uh, program which is, it, I guess it's, it, it, it was very early Caldev server and uh, unfortunately I think it has suffered from quite a lot of code rot and its CalDev support. Um, it, it, it implements various older sort of standards and, and some it gets a few things wrong and it does a lot of its communication with Chandler is not done via CalDev and so that particular path doesn't get tested very very well. Um, there's a mod CalDev for Apache that is very lightweight um, CalDev server. I, I, I think it's got some significant limitations as to what it can do in terms of CalDev. And there's an interesting one called Dev Mail, which is a single user CalDev server which allows you to use uh, evolution via CalDev and on your local machine to a, uh, to a um, exchange server in the back end or something peculiar along those lines. There's also been some work in the Samba project uh, with the open change to, to do a implementation of the exchange, um, exchange interface in free software. I, I don't know how well that's working. Has anybody tried that? implements mapping which Microsoft declared was obsolete or obsolescent as of Exchange 2007. They've now moved to a new protocol which is HTTP and SOAP based called Exchange Web Services. We are currently putting together an evolution backend which supports that. Okay. Um, so there's various other uh, server software, Microsoft Exchange, um, which we've talked about a little bit. That's obviously a very, very widely deployed solution. Uh, Sun Calendar Server, which is now owned by Oracle. Oracle Beehive, uh, which is uh, another... So Sun Calendar Server and Oracle Beehive both do support CalDev, support significant CalDev. And uh, Lotus Notes, uh, which does interoperate with, which does interoperate with iCalendar, and um, um, but it doesn't do CalDev or anything like that. So uh, there's no doubt thousands of others out there. The EM client people also have a have a server that supports CalDev, um, for example. So. so yes, further reading. I don't have any of that. And um, yes, if you have any questions. I'd be happy to talk about them. So, um, do you know if Novell Groupwise does iCal? I mean, I should know this given I work with Novell products, but uh, 
group wise, you, I'm sure you can interchange my calendar with it, but yeah, I'm not sure. Um, and just on um, Dave Mail, it's it's basically a, an Exchange gateway. So from Exchange 2003, they're working on making it work on 2007 plus. Um, yeah, and it, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> It's a, but it's a personal gateway, right? Yeah, it's a personal so, gateway. Or you can actually set it up uh, to be a bit of a server for multiple people, I think. Uh, I haven't done it that way. I usually just run it on the desktop. Yeah. Mm, thanks. Uh, good day. I run um, a mail server, and it's got a, a group groupware server as well. Um, the biggest problem that I find is clients not interoperating with each other. They supply date formats incorrectly and do a whole lot of horrible things. And then, so if you read it with one and write it with another, you get very bad results. Do you see that changing? It, it's, um, I guess, you know, it's, it's Always going to be a problem. Um, I, I'm a member of the uh, of the uh, calendaring and scheduling consortium, and uh, as part of that, I get involved in interoperability testing for for various bits and pieces of calendar software. I try and and put whatever interoperability testing things I can. So I know, for example, that. Oracle do test interoperability with Davacal, and um, and uh, I certainly test against all of the. So with my Android client, I've tested so far against uh, Beehive, um, Sogo, you know, all, pretty much all of the ones I have access to, which is about seven different test servers, and then um, you know I I run a lot of testing for clients software, so. You do what you can, but you know there's always going to be some interoperability issues. It just takes time to get rid of those, I think. But I mean, if you speak to Mr. Allman, I think he'll suggest that they still happen 30 years on with email. Yeah, I, I believe that uh, Chandler and Cosmo uh, are fading away. There's no more funding from Mitch Kapoor, no expert. Maybe somebody knows more than I do, but I th think I read a report of that recently. Uh, the source code is, you know, free and in the in the community. So, yeah, I think there isn't funding, but then you know there isn't funding for a lot of these projects. Uh, Chandler, I think, probably. Will will survive much better than Cosmo will, because there are much better alternatives to Cosmo. Uh, you know, it's it's a resource hog. Um, it's kind of old. It doesn't implement modern standards, and I, yeah, you know, I I haven't looked at the code, but I think it's a long way from really being a a, a good thing to use in production. I. I was involved in one site where uh, Cosmo was replaced with Davacal and there was a thousand percent or so um, performance improvement. So. <laughs> um, you mentioned there was like an Android app. Are other mobile phone manufacturers and operating system producers actually following the, the standards process as far as you can see? Well, the, the iPhone has support for CalDAV and CardDAV um, built in. Apple are very keen on these particular standards. So uh, so the Apple products do support CalDAV, CardDAV um, and, and often um, support interesting extensions to CalDAV and CardDAV as well. And, and it's not an embrace and extend strategy so much as uh, these protocols are still under development strategy. So the people involved in some of the standards work are particularly on the calendar server team. Um, so they, they are quite involved in this. And they do want to see these as standards, and they do want to see adoption of them. So um, that's, that's a good thing. You know, that's, in terms of the CalDAV stuff, uh, Apple is the most important client in existence, it, it seems. But um, yeah, open source clients are also getting more and more use. 
particularly cross-platform ones. So, yeah. Are they doing much towards standardising the date format? You mentioned before that there's a lot of problems with that. Somebody mentioned before there were a lot of problems with that. The date format is part of the uh, uh, part of the iCalendar standard, and RFC five five four five perhaps clarifies that a bit further, but. I can tell you exactly what dates should look like in an iCalendar file. It's just that perhaps there's some software that doesn't always get that right. Um, what about programming? I don't know if this was mentioned programming libraries um, or you know, languages in which there's strong support for this kind of thing. Yep. Um, so there's uh, libical, which is a C library which is pretty extensively used. It's the source of that is on SourceForge, and it's got some weird name like Free Radical or something like that. It's, I forget the exact name of it, but it's Free Association. Thank you. Uh, there's a um, there's a Java iCalendar library. Uh, iCal4j, that's pretty comprehensive. Uh, we looked at, we, we used that for a little while um, in the Android project, um, but ended up ripping it out. Its target was, its target seemed to be uh, files that contained many events, and we were writing a CalDAV client where we had many individual blobs and the performance didn't seem to be too good from our point of view but we may just have been in too much of a hurry and you know not able to learn it so we ended up writing our own um, so I guess that'll be available reasonably soon when we put ACAL out. Uh, there's libraries in Python and Perl and um, that, that are reasonably comprehensive, I believe. Uh, I was looking at some code the other day using the Python library. I'm not a Python coder, so I can't say exactly, but, but seeing the Python code that was dealing with calendaring stuff, the um, vEvent, uh, I think it was using a vEvent library, that seemed to be very sane. And it, once it was being driven correctly, it started producing the right code. So that was actually the code that's in Zookeeper for the conference system, so hopefully the iCalendar feed of the conference schedule is now uh, valid, <laughs> which it wasn't on Monday. Um, you mentioned that, I don't know if you know about this or not, but you mentioned that uh, Apple is using extended attributes for their server. Um, yep. Radical uses, uh, I think it's just flat iCal files. Um, they were using extended attributes for the metadata. So they were using flat files. Data? They were using flat files for the uh, calendar event data. But when you're um, processing the calendar event data for reports and so on, you often need to have metadata about it. For example, the calendar object itself doesn't say what its permissions are necessarily. So you, you have to have various metadata and the file system metadata typically is not sufficient to, to define the metadata that you need to respond to various report requests and so on that CalDAV defines. Yeah, I think that's where Radical might run into some trouble in the future. With, because you know, it wasn't made to use a database. Apple have taken several passes at that and, and one um, thing that, that they did was to put SQLite databases in each in each um, folder and uh, and use those for storing the metadata and that's that's a a faster uh, answer than using extended attributes and then um, beyond SQLite databases they're now looking at Postgres as far as I understand it and and that again is you know going to offer bigger performance improvements. Can you uh, quickly describe the <coughs> the implementation of, of uh, Devical? Like, is it PHP and Postgres? Or? Uh, yeah, okay. So Devical is um, a PHP application. Um, it's, I don't know. <laughs> Essentially, you know, it goes big in PHP at the top and... <laughs> 
<laughs> code happens and, uh, and it, 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 all, the, all of the data is stored in the database with as little m massaging as possible. So it doesn't use the file system at all for data storage. Uh, the blobs are stored in the database. Um, the metadata is stored in the database. And I use Postgres essentially because I, I like it. I like its date handling capability. It's very strong in that area. Um, I used PHP just because I know it. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I can I can go chapter and verse on it if you want, but um, it's not really it's not really the thing to do in front of a room full of people. I think to analyse the code, it's probably better to sit down with it and point it. But <laughs> all the documentation is online and PHP doc kind of formatted. I try and maintain all that stuff as well. And some people are scared of PHP. I, um, I have had it audited by uh, somebody who does that for a living, so that's good too. Any more questions? Okay, let's put our hands together for our speaker. On behalf of LCA, I'd like to present uh, our speaker with this little present. Um, I think he probably knows what's in there by now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.